Hello friends, welcome back to Sidebar with Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Haney and if you're a Trump supporter, today's your lucky day because I'm talking about WikiLeaks. Now very first thing off the top, I just want to point something out that I think a lot of people maybe miss. Benghazi and the private email server, which are two things that are very prominent in WikiLeaks, actually arose from the same set of events. The reason I want to make that distinction is because I've had conversations with people where they say this private email server use is the second time that Clinton has really betrayed our trust. But what I want people to know is that the private email server use was actually all tied up with the Benghazi investigation. During the Benghazi investigation, they were looking for Clinton's emails relating to Libya. Well, they didn't find any. So then they said, hey, where's all these emails? And she said, oh, I used a private email server. And that's where it all came rolling up together. So two issues, one set of facts. They arise from the same set of facts. So I just want to put that out there. Second thing, you guys know that I'm voting for Hillary Clinton, OK? I trust her. I really, truly believe that some stuff we don't necessarily want in the public record. State emails are public record. They're subject to Freedom of Information Act requests, okay? I don't think that the public can or should know everything. I vote for people that I trust to make the decisions on things that are better for me, for my safety, not to know about it. And I get it. Trump supporters, you trust Trump to make those kinds of decisions that you might not know about. I don't know why, but you do. And I trust Hillary, so there's that, okay? It's so not a big deal to me that she used a private email server, especially because so did Colin Powell and so did Condoleezza Rice and so did how many other people. But anyway, getting back to WikiLeaks, this open borders comment. So on WikiLeaks, we can see an excerpt of a speech that Hillary Clinton made to a Brazilian bank. And in it, she says she wants open trade, open borders, sustainable energy, etc. And so now we have Donald Trump saying that she wants open borders, just let everybody in. Okay, maybe she does want open borders with Brazil because she gave the speech to a Brazilian bank. But here's my question. Are you afraid of Brazilians too? You can't be afraid of everyone. There won't be anybody left. Brazilians are pretty great. They're good at soccer. They're hot. Bring them on. Bring all the Brazilians in. Happy to have them. Okay, so some of the other things that we'll see on WikiLeaks. The 30,000 private emails from the server of Hillary Clinton's. Yes, those are on there. We already talked about that. Now, with the 18th release of the Podesta emails, we have about 30,000 emails from Podesta on WikiLeaks. That's a lot of freaking emails. I don't even want to read my own email. I get it. There's just a sense of curiosity there. You know, we're getting like an inside peek into things. But guess what, guys? Campaign emails are never going to be nice. Bernie Sanders even said that if you looked through his campaign emails, there would be some not very nice things in there about Hillary Clinton. Campaign people are basically public relations people. They are supposed to handle things. So when we see emails about how they're going to handle certain issues, that's exactly what we should be expecting to see from them. Also, people treat email these days like a text message. You're not going to see me talking shit about anyone in an email. I save that for my text messages. Although with all this cyber attack stuff going on right now, we might want to start cleaning up our text messages too. Anyway, so we're seeing all this stuff on WikiLeaks, right? We've got all these emails from Podesta, we've got all these emails from Clinton, we've got all the DNC emails, nothing from the Trump campaign, by the way, which I think is interesting. So I wanted to get a little context into what exactly is WikiLeaks? Who is the man behind WikiLeaks? Who is Julian Assange? So I did a little research about him. Here's what I found out. Julian Assange is an Australian. He's currently living in a one-bedroom apartment in the Ecuador Embassy in the United Kingdom because in 2010 he went to Sweden and two women there accused him of sexual assault and rape. So, he's in the Ecuador Embassy because they have given him political asylum. Sounds a little weird, right, for somebody who's potentially accused of rape in Sweden? Well, here's the deal. Assange leaked military cables in 2010. Hillary Clinton, as the Secretary of State, came out and said that she thought it was abhorrible that he did that and really spoke out strongly against him. And in that moment, banks that were working with WikiLeaks froze all their assets, okay? So totally pissed him off. 
So now we get a little bit of understanding behind the root of his hatred for Hillary Clinton because she came out and made that very public statement. So he thinks if he goes to Sweden to be questioned about this alleged rape, because Sweden has an extradition agreement with the U.S. that he'll actually be extradited to the U.S. and potentially subject to court-martial or something that sounds really scary. But here's the deal. When you obtain documents illegally as a journalist, which Julian Assange maintains that he is a journalist, you can't be punished for publishing things that you obtained illegally as long as you didn't encourage the illegal obtaining of those documents. So, Julian Assange, did you encourage the illegal obtaining of documents? Did you personally illegally procure these documents or were they given to you? That's the question. So he's probably not gonna get extradited to the US and even if he does, what are they gonna charge him with unless he actually was involved in the illegal procurement of these documents? I just found that really interesting and I wanted to share that with you guys because when I started looking at the history behind WikiLeaks and who Julian Assange, the creator is, and what that sort of means to the information we're seeing now and the information that we're not seeing. Just thought it made a lot of sense. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hopefully I didn't make the Trump supporters too mad. Over Hillary.